What is up guys, we're back with another BIOS video and today we're checking out the Click BIOS 5 here on MSI's Z790 Project Zero motherboard. Now this BIOS should be pretty much the same across all of MSI's Z790 motherboards, although depending on your board, some settings might not be the same and they might be in different places, but overall it should be pretty much the same. Now, if you're wondering how do I get into this BIOS like how do I get to this screen? All you have to do is when you turn on your system, you just keep on hitting the delete key on your keyboard, not the backspace, just keep on hitting delete and then you'll be dropped into this menu system here. Now this is going to be the easy mode of the BIOS. If you wanna jump into advanced mode, you just hit this advanced up here or just hit F7 on your keyboard and you can easily tab between both. As you can see when I tab between both, this top section always remains. So in this top section, we have, you know, our date, our time, our CPU speed, our DDR speed, our temperatures for CPU and motherboard, vCore voltage, and which BIOS mode that we're running. Over here, we have the motherboard that we're running, our CPU, memory size, BIOS version, and the BIOS build date. Here, we do have our boot priority, and it's super simple to change your boot priority. All you have to do is just drag and drop just like that, really simple and easy to go ahead and do that. Now for XMP profiles, if you wanna enable an XMP profile, I already have my XMP profile enabled, but if you know this is your first boot, it would look like something like this, and then you just click right there to easily enable an XMP profile. If your DDR5 does have Expo profiles, they will be shown here as well. Game Boost is a simple overclock, and all you have to do is just click there to enable it. It's that simple, really easy to go ahead and do. Now, as we move down into the easy mode, we have tabs for CPU, memory, storage, fan info, and help. So CPU is just gonna give you all of the information on your CPU. Memory is the exact same. Storage, same thing. We can just see that we have our one M.2 drive installed. Under fan info, this is gonna show, you know, your speed of your fans and everything like that, your fan curves for both your CPU and pump fans, as well as your system fans. Now, if you want more detailed control or you wanna really set your fan curves, you can just click this right here, this little gear, and this does bring up the hardware monitor. So again, you can see all of your system fans, your CPU fan, your pump header, everything, and then you can go ahead and set your fan curves if you want. Of course, it does give you the live graph, and then it does also give you all of your temperatures and all of your voltages down here. So it pretty much gives you everything that you wanna see in terms of temperatures and voltages and fan speeds. Then we just have help, which one, it's gonna show you what that game boost function does depending on your processor. So I have a Core i7 14700K installed, and when I click on the Game Boost up here, it's gonna set the P Core Max to 5.7 gigahertz and the E Core Max to 4.4 gigahertz. And then it's just gonna show you little shortcuts right here. So if you're having trouble finding things or whatever it may be, here are all your shortcuts. Now down here, we have some things we can easily enable like TPM, that's enabled by default. We can enable RAID. We can turn the you know LEDs on the board on or off completely. Turn on the HD audio controller, set up ERP right here, and then the CPU fan warning control, we can turn that on or off. We also have M flash, so this will go into a mode and it will allow you to easily flash your BIOS. We do have a favorites menu here. I haven't added anything to my favorites, but you can add any setting on this board into your favorites, which is really nice. And again, we have that same tab right here for that hardware monitor that I just showed you. Now that is everything in easy mode and I think it gives you everything that you need. Setting your XMP profile, maybe doing that one click game boost, boot priority, it's all right here and easy to do. Now, if you wanted to go more advanced, we just go into advanced mode again, click here or just hit F7 on your keyboard. And now we're into the advanced mode. So first is our settings here and let me go back. Oh no, that's it. So settings, first we have system status that gives us all of our information again on everything that's kind of on the board itself. And then advanced is all the settings for everything that's on the board. So we have, you know, PCIe subsystem settings, all of our, you know, M.2 gen modes, everything's set as it should be by default. But if you did need to change anything for some reason, it is all right in here. And to go back, you can just hit this or just hit escape on your keyboard. So if I hit escape, I just go back really easy to do. ACPI settings. 
We have our integrated peripherals. And again, this is everything that's on the board. So you can enable, disable all the SATA hot plugs and things like that. Turn off, you know, the network stack. You can turn on the LAN controller. All that stuff you can turn on and off. You can enable or disable the HD audio controller in here. Very easy to do. Integrated graphics configuration. If you are using integrated graphics, you can go ahead and change these settings. USB configuration. Again, you can enable or disable US legacy USB support as well as enable or disable every port or USB header on this board. We also have power management setup. We have, you know, the, the different BIOS mode, whether it's CSM or UEFI, you should always be in UEFI. Wake on event setup. So if you want to set up a wake on event, you can do it right here. And secure erase. So this is going to allow you to securely erase an SSD. Even if you format something, some of the data can, of course, be recovered. So if you have, you know, really sensitive information, you want to secure erase before you go ahead and maybe sell your PC or sell an SSD or get rid of an SSD. You wanna run the secure erase on it so you have that there. We also have the MSI driver utility installer. So when you install Windows for the first time, you'll get a little pop-up that's gonna ask you if you wanna install MSI's driver utility. It makes it really easy so it's gonna automatically download all the drivers for the motherboard for you. Now you can disable this. It's enabled by default, but I would say, you know, you should just leave it there because it just makes it easier. But if you don't want that, you can disable it. And then when you restart Windows again, it's not going to ask again. Once it knows that it's installed, it won't ask you again. We also have, you know, information on both the wireless and wired network configurations. So you can see information on both of those as well. We also have boot. So this is going to be everything on the boot. So whether it's your boot priorities, again, you can drag and drop up here. But if you want to set everything, you can do that here as well. And then enabling like full screen logo and fast boots and things like that, you can enable or disable. Under security, you can set administrator password, user password, things like that. You can set up anything with TPM. It's all right in here. And of course, you know, your intrusion, intrusion detection, you can turn that on or off. And of course, set up secure boot in here as well. And then save and exit. Save and exit will allow you to completely discard your changes to save your changes. You can also um, restore all your defaults. So say you mess something up, you need to restore it. It's right here. You can just restore your defaults. And we also have boot override, which I love. If you are installing Windows from a flash drive, you can use boot override to boot to that drive first. And then when you do your restart, it won't try to boot to that drive a second time. So really easy to go ahead and set that up or you know just select one of these to boot from. And that is everything in our you know, main settings menu. If we go over here to OC, this is going to be everything for overclocking and tuning your system. Whether it's CPU settings, whether it's your voltage settings, RAM settings, it's all gonna be in the OC menu. Now you can set the OC Explore mode to normal or expert. If you're not really doing any overclocking, just set it to normal but you can set it to expert to open up, you know, some different settings. But here we can set our P core ratios, our E core ratios, you know, our ring down ratios, our GT ratios. We can also set up what CPU cooler we have. So this will adapt the CPU power limit profile depending on what CPU cooler you select. So I'm running an AIO. So I've gone ahead and selected a water cooler but again if you're using a tower air cooler and aftermarket air cooler you would select tower and box cooler would be like the cooler that comes with your cpu cooler so you have all of that and then of course you know our base clock settings things like that this is also where you would enable xmp if you didn't just click up here you just select your xmp profile really easy to go ahead and do that and then we have all of our memory settings um, you know, our memory speeds and everything like that. And you can go into the advanced DRAM configuration and set all of your timings. Again, like there's so many different timing settings and things you can do within the BIOS if you really wanted to. Of course, I think most of you will just leave this, you know, at its default settings or auto settings. Then we go down to our voltage settings. This is all of your voltage settings for you know your cpu and and things like that your memory everything is right here 
And then you have digital all power, which of course is your load line calibrations. And one thing I do like about this BIOS is that over here, anytime I go over a different setting, it gives me information on that setting. So if I'm not sure what that setting is, I have the information right here on the side, which is definitely nice. Now we'll go out of there. So we have all, again, all of our voltage settings right here, really easy. And then we have some other settings, memory OC retry account. So if you're trying a memory OC, it will, you know, you can set how it's going to go ahead and try it. So it's set to two here, but you can go ahead and try that. CPU memory change detect, you can set that. Um, CPU specifications just gives us information on our CPU and then the technology support that's enabled or disabled. We have memory Z, which again, is just going to give us information on our memory. And then we have CPU features, which are all the features in our CPU that we can either enable or disable. So all of, like I said, the tuning settings are just right in this OC menu and everything is pretty easy to find. I didn't have trouble trying to find a specific setting. Um, I didn't go into advanced CPU configuration, but again, this is gonna be all of those CPU specific settings, Intel Turbo Boost, in, Intel Boost Max 3.0, all of your power limits. So if you, do, if you are doing overclocking, all your power limits will be set here as well. So um, again, really easy to find everything in this OC menu. M flash, of course, again, that's to flash your BIOS, really easy to do. We can also save and load overclocking profiles. So just save and load profiles by default. So if you did have different profiles, you can easily save or load them here. Hardware monitor is the exact same thing that we had previously brought up. So again, live graph of everything and shows all of our, our pumps and our fans. And of course, temperatures and voltages. And then we have beta runner which essentially this DTM is, um, it, it, I believe it's something with the titles or something. It, the DTM is not really important. The only thing that I would really use in here is the NVMe SSD self-test. Um, and that allows you to test your NVMe drive. Um, I don't think most of you will go into this beta runner. It's some things that they have on here. So that is essentially it for this BIOS. I think it's really easy to get around. It's really easy to find all of your settings. And I think most things can be done in the easy mode that you would wanna do on like a first boot, you know, before you go ahead and install Windows. Really easy to go ahead and do that. Now, if you have any questions about this BIOS, go ahead and leave it in the comment section below. And if you enjoyed this video, I would appreciate it if you hit the thumbs up and we'll see you guys in the next video.